Hey everybody, Christian here and today I want to show you a really interesting device that I had a chance to review the last weeks. And if you follow my channel for quite some time, you probably know that it doesn't really happen often that I do product reviews, but uh, this device here definitely caught my interest. I'm talking about the Zima bot and this is a tiny small single server bot where some people might not think, well, this just looks like a Raspberry Pi with a nice cooler, but this is so much more. The Zima bot is a real x86 architectural PC with incredible hardware specs, dual one gigabit ethernet ports, and that alone is very impressive because it allows you very interesting builds like installed firewall systems, home routers, servers, portable PCs, and much more. So let me tell you what I think about it. First I want to thank Seed Studio for sending me this device. It came in a nice suitcase with some useful gadgets like an SSD, power cables, an NVMe PCIe adapter and so on. So everything that I needed to start playing around. That's really cool. And the first thing I just need to say about the Zima board, regardless of any functions or technical details, I think it just looks incredibly nice. And that means a lot to me to be honest. I just like when a product looks nice and polished. It just gives me a good feeling about it. And this awesome looking passive cooler here makes it very stylish in my opinion. And it's also pretty small for a fully functional x86 PC. That's really impressive. It's actually just a little bigger than a Raspberry Pi. And it has all the necessary I.O. ports like on a typical PC. It has a mini display port, USB ports, two Ethernet ports, two SATA ports on the front, and on the side, an open-ended PCIe slot where you can probably just plug in any PCIe device. I guess you probably can even add a graphics card in here, even though it wouldn't make much sense, so I guess that's more for testing PCIe slots and cards. Uh, but we will later also talk more about different use cases of this device here because there are some pretty nice ideas I have for it. If you're wondering what the technical specs are for this device and the interfaces, you will find them on the official website. And by the way, really nice product presentation. There are three different models of the Zima board that all come with more or less powerful CPUs and memory configurations. The smallest one has two CPU cores, two gigabytes of memory, and a 16 gigabyte eMMC storage. The medium one has four CPU cores, four gigabytes of memory, and a 32 gigabyte storage. The biggest one has the same CPU and storage configuration like like the medium one, but with eight gigabytes of memory. The PCIe slot is an open-ended X4 PCIe 2.0 slot, so it's probably not meant to be very fast, but it's absolutely enough to test a few cards if they work. The SATA drives can also run at full speed, like on a normal PC, and the two Ethernet ports are running at one gigabit. And the display port supports 4K and 60 FPS, so it's absolutely usable as a desktop PC. As I said, the x86 architecture CPU on this thing makes it very special, as this is not really limited to any ARM-based operating systems. You can just install everything on it, even a full-blown Windows operating system. It also has Intel VTD and VTX, so the virtualization engine, and this could even run some virtual machines on it. So you could even install Proxbox on this little thing. So with this device, you got all the flexibility to use it for whatever you want. But if you just want to use it as a home server based on Linux, you can just keep the pre-installed Linux Debian system that has Casa OS pre-installed. A Casa OS is something I actually didn't know before, to be honest, but that also seems a nice project. And that is also made by the same people behind the Zima bot, if I'm correct. Casa OS is a community based open source focus project that you can use to manage a Linux based home server. It has Docker built in on board and a personal file cloud, smart home applications and it's very user friendly and easy to set up because it has a graphical user interface. I might take a closer look at this because I believe this could be a very nice project to look at when you're interested in self hosting and personal cloud and home servers. So I probably will cover the software part of Casa OS in a separate video at some point even though I am not fully against any public cloud environments and I like to use Microsoft Azure, OneDrive, Google Drive and these services. I believe it's always good to have some alternative choices for personal home clouds and self-hosting. And with this device, it was probably never so easy to get started with it. Because you got a very solid pre-installed system here, it should have enough computing power for a small home server. But even if you're not into self-hosting and you're more into experimenting and building your own system according to your needs, the Zima board is a great device to look at because just like I said, you can install anything on it. For example, you could use this as a portable testing PC so that you 
can just grab and carry around in your pocket and you can use it to connect any SATA drives quickly or test in any PCIe cards to see if they are working. Maybe you just want to install an experiment with Linux desktops and install a new distribution on it or even Windows. That is a perfect use case for that device in my opinion. But there's also another idea I had in mind as this board is perfect for firebot systems because one feature that not many devices in this size offer are two Ethernet ports. Because typically with firewall systems, you want to use the first port to connect it to your network switch, and the second one you want to connect to your router or any uplink devices so that it connects to the internet. I'm really happy they've put another Ethernet port onto that device because that makes it perfect for building a custom home router, network firewall with an operating system like PFSense, OpenSense, or the Sophos XG firewall. As you probably know, I'm a big fan of the Sophos XG firewall. I already made two videos about it and by the way speaking about my videos if you like what I'm doing here on this channel you can help supporting me by leaving a like and subscribe that would be really cool. So that was the first idea that I had in mind for this device I just wanted to test if I'm able to run the Sophos XG firewall on this small PC. To install the Sophos XG firewall on the Zima board I just needed to download the Sophos home firewall OS and copy it with Rufus to a USB drive. By the way if you're doing this make sure that you're using the DD option to write the data, which is not recommended, but I got some errors during the boot process when not using the DD option. So that's something you should take care of. But once Rufus has written the operating system to the USB drive, you can just put it into one of these USB ports here and boot it up. The boot menu of the Zima board let you configure everything like on a regular mainboard, so you can choose the boot order and check if you have any attached drives and devices. By the way, you can also of course use an SSD or NVMe via PCIe to install the operating system on this system. But I also figured out that the Sophos XG firewall just fits well on the eMMC drive on this system built in, so that is enough to store a firewall operating system. And then I just needed to follow the installation procedure of the firewall system. Once this is booted up, you can configure it and connect to the web interface of the firewall. Again, I've done several videos about the Sophos XG. I don't want to go through the entire setup part here in this short review. If you are interested in this firewall operating system, I've put you both links to my other videos in the description. So you can check them out later if you want. And as you can see, everything works perfectly. The web interface might react a little slower than on my Rack server device. However, that's probably expected because yeah it's it's just a very small device but everything else works like a charm. I can see the two Ethernet interfaces port 1 is the LAN interface and port 2 is a WAN interface and you can now use the Zima board as a home router, a firewall system to control your network traffic in your home lab and protect devices against hackers, malware and other attacks. People who are familiar with firewall systems like the Sophos XG or maybe even PFSense or OpenSense, look I don't actually want to say you need to use this or that specific system. If you are familiar with firewall systems, you should get it running on the Zima board fairly easy. Because of the x86 CPU architecture and the two Ethernet ports, you got everything you need to set it up properly. That's very, very cool. And yeah, I guess these are some ideas I had in mind that I wanted to test on the system. Everything that I tested works pretty well. It works with Linux, it works with Windows and even firewall operating systems. Well, I have really searched for something that I could criticize about it, but honestly, I haven't really found anything. It has great hardware specs so that you can use it for almost everything that you might need in a home lab. In my opinion, you get a lot of value here for a really fair price. So on the homepage, you can see how much the different models cost. I think that's absolutely okay for what you get here. So can I recommend this device? Absolutely, there are endless use cases for it and it overall seems like a very polished product and experience here. You can just plug this device in and everything works right out of the box, just like you would know it from a normal PC. Really cool device for any home lab projects. I will continue using it for a couple of Linux projects that I want to do in the future. And I hope you liked the short review and as always, thanks everybody for watching. I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.